Maxwell House Coffee presents Good News of 1938. music means you're invited to spend another hour behind the scenes in Hollywood as the guests of Maxwell House Coffee, brought to you from Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios, home of the world's greatest stars. And here's your host, Robert Taylor. Thanks, Ted, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm kind of glad it's Thursday night again, because this week, besides our regular gang... Frank Morgan, Fanny Bryce, Connie Boswell, Hanley Stafford, Meredith Wilson's Orchestra, and Max Turr's Choristers. We have as our special guest Miss Virginia Bruce paying a second visit to our good news show, and Robert Montgomery, not only a fine actor, but one swell guy. But more about Bob Montgomery later. And now, uh, oh, Meredith. Yes, Bob? Are your cohorts prepared for the evening soiree? I believe so, sir. You call the roll? No, sir, but I'll do it immediately, sir. Violin? <laughs> Saxophone? <laughs> brass? Bass. Drum. Uh, the drummer isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. Now let's uh, let's give out with that double dandy arrangement of I've taken a fancy to you. To your trusty men, I say, Oli, Oli, in free. Here comes the downbeat, ready or not. <laughs> believe this, but there's a considerable amount of hard work in making pictures. Getting up at five o'clock in the morning after working long after dark, sometimes in heavy costumes, always under glaring arc lights, it takes energy. And so most of us here at MGM have found that it pays to keep in just as good shape physically as we possibly can. And the fellow who helped us do it is the man I want you to meet now. Five feet ten inches of brain plus brawn, MGM's physical trainer, Donald Bloomer. Thank you. Thanks very much, Bob. Now, Don, I don't want to cross-examine you, but how about giving out with a little information on calories and corpuscles once in a minute, huh? Well, Bob, I hardly know where to start. Well, start with yourself, Don. You weren't born 5 feet 10 inches and 175 pounds, were you? I'll tell you, Bob, up until I was 8 years old, I was a pushover for any kid on the block. As a matter of fact, at school I was so skinny that when I stood sideways, they marked me absent. <laughs> and when did you start blooming as a modern Hercules? My nose started blooming first. <laughs> a bully, 30 pounds my senior, punched it. Uh, so that's when you decided to develop your own bodyguard, huh? Yes, I figured a few more muscles wouldn't hurt, so I went to work. Well, you certainly did yourself a good job. And, Don, you really do believe, don't you, that by conscientiously following your instructions, any normal person can gain or reduce poundage and increase vitality? The best way I can answer that is to tell you about a few of my cases. One female star was signed with the understanding that she must lose 30 pounds in four months. 
She's very well known, and of course I can't mention her name. Found an actress that doesn't want publicity. Well, well, 30 pounds of her don't. But a steady course of gymnastics, seven days a week, a balanced diet, and this girl is now a perfect flirty six. Oh. Don, see if you can reduce those puns, will you? <laughs> okay, Bob. <laughs> Don, I imagine you run into a lot of people who find the going a little tough. You're, you're exercising a little wearing. Well, you find slackers everywhere. There's one fellow I told... Uh, they told me to get in shape. And for the last six weeks, I've practically had to drag him to the gym. <laughs> Stand over him like a Simon Legree and make him do a few little exercises. Well, that's not a very unusual case, is it? Yes, it is, Bob. In seven weeks, that guy only lost one pound. Then he went on a party to celebrate and gained five. He's still 45 pounds overweight. So I wrote that short-winded, loose-livered, good-for-nothing a letter and told him to keep away from my gym. Uh, I got you a letter, Mr. Loomis. I... <laughs> I don't quite understand your attitude. Well, hello, it's... Frank. How are you? Yeah, well, it's me in the flesh. <laughs> Forty-five pounds too much. I mean muscle, every flabby inch of it. Uh... <laughs> Of course, Mr. Loomis, I don't want to mention any names, but if somebody had a gymnasium and one of the pupils in his class was huskier than he was, I wouldn't blame somebody for not wanting me in your class. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, are you referring to me? Well, if my shorts fit you, wear them. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm the best physical specimen in the class. There's 40 of us in there, and I stand out like a sore bum. Uh, thumb. Who wrote that in here? This is sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then it's uh, really a shame that Don had to expel you, Frank. Well, he did it for the good of the class. I mean, he, he, you shouldn't have done it. Bob, the truth is that only last Wednesday I came in and exercised for six full minutes. And just because I asked for a simple little massage, Don got mad. Don, I thought it was your practice to give everybody a rub down. Yeah. Yes, but not with three-star Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> What, a rub down with brandy? Well, Anna Hell took milk baths. Well, I will say that Don gave me my own way, <laughs> except that the brandy was cut. <clears throat> you can't fool my skin. I can taste the difference. <laughs> Frank, after seeing you again, I really think I ought to take you back. Yeah. It's not a very good ad for my gym to have a fat man like you running around. Well, snap my girdle. Who's fat? <laughs> Don, I make an ideal appearance the way I am. Besides, what guarantee have I got that you can make me look normal? Well, look at Bob Taylor over there, one of my pupils. He looks pretty good, doesn't he? Taylor, what has he got that I wish I had? <laughs> Listen, Don, I don't mind your expelling me at all because I've got a beautiful gym in my new home. You should see my new electric horse. It works on alternating current. <laughs> I call it AC Biscuit. <laughs> If you don't like that joke, the feeling is parimutuel. <laughs> Those electric horses are great exercises, Frank. You're right, Don. I was strapped on mine five hours this morning. I handled it beautifully until someone turned on the switch. It was bad enough when it galloped out of the gym and ran into Hollywood, but imagine my embarrassment when it stopped in front of the electric company and they made me pay my bill. <laughs> Would you believe it? No. Well, I don't either, but it's the truth. <laughs> Besides, you're just mad because you know I don't need to take your course. Anybody who knows me realizes I'm bursting with energy and extraordinary strength. The only thing that bothers me is that I feel so weak. <laughs> what did you say? Frank, place yourself in my hands. No. Follow my instructions explicitly. And in two months, you'll be strong enough to tear your telephone book in half. Yeah, my telephone book in half. <laughs> With the numbers I've got, I'm crazy. <laughs> now, Don, you take this number, Gladstone, 6925. <laughs> She's a lovely girl. Repulsive, but quaint. <laughs> <laughs> I must call her. That's a good idea, Frank. Here's the phone. Where? Let me have it. Oh, no, I don't use those dial phones. Not me. No, why not? Well, lately I've been so weak, you know. I was using my phone the other night, and I swung the dial around... My finger got caught, and when the dial swung back, <laughs> it picked me up and threw me against the wall. <laughs> Almost broke my neck. Well, I'll see you later, boys. I... <laughs> Good night, Bob. Good night, Bob. <laughs>